Please note that some pictures may not be suitable for all audience. I am not a hijama practitioner. They should not be taken as medical advice. Always use a professional hijama practitioner. King or Islamic term hijama. When Michael Phelps propelled the United States to 400 meter relay team, the dots on his body were marks of cupping. That's when I first time heard about it. Although I was born and raised in an Islamic country, I never heard of cupping of hijama. We have forgotten about this amazing Islamic practice until the 2016 Olympics. Once I saw and learned about it, I have been getting this treatment at least once or twice a year. It's very beneficial for your health. Although a few thousand years have passed and cupping continues to be a common practice in traditional Chinese medicine and in some parts of Middle East, the practice is still not accepted by healthcare providers in Europe and North America. There are two types of cupping therapy. Number one is non-invasive cupping without bloodletting, which is called dry cupping. And number two is invasive cupping with bloodletting, which is called wet cupping. In cupping therapy, there are three methods commonly used by cupping therapists. Fire cupping, pump cups, rubber silicone cups. Cups can be applied with the use of heat known as fire cupping. In this method, a flame is introduced to the empty space of the cup to consume the oxygen. The cup is then quickly applied to the body creating a vacuum. A rubber pump is used to create a vacuum. This causes the skin to rise. The blood vessels will expand and is used to create a massage effect. The sites are selected according to the treated ailment. Cups are simply applied over the skin and with a squeeze of the top, a vacuum is produced. Wet cupping or hijama. When cups are applied after a piercing of the skin, this is known as wet cupping. The piercing removes static blood and toxin from the body. The suction of the cup speeds up the process. What do your cupping color tells you? Knowing your cupping colors meaning is important to understand one's energy state. If you look closer, you may find that some marks are darker than the other and our different areas may have different colors. Here is a cupping therapy color guide. Pink or light red marks are healthy circulation. Red marks moderate stagnation. Dark purple marks severe stagnation and poor circulation. Pale purple marks healthy circulation. Cupping points for your body starting from the top, back, lungs, heart, liver, stomach, kidney, big intestine. Session. Some people find cupping therapy simil similar to massage. However, the sensation you will experience depends upon the area treated and your own body. It shouldn't be painful. You will probably feel tightness when the cup is attached to your skin, but this feeling should not last. The practitioner should check in with you to make sure that you are comfortable throughout the treatment. When will the cupping marks go away? The cupping marks will slowly fade after 5 to 10 days depending on the circulation and skin's regenerative ability. The lighter the color, the fast it fades. 
if it is light pink it will fade within an hour but if it's dark purple then it will take up to two weeks it is advised not to take a shower or bath right after cupping since all pores are open and external pathogens could easily get into the body if it is wet cupping it will require at least 24 hours before you could have contact with water it is not recommended as a replacement for mainstream medication or treatments it is not suitable for patient who have blood disease or bleeding tendency or taking blood thinners such as warfarin FAQs 90% of patients don't feel any pain but some depending on their pain threshold may experience a ticklish sensation and others may feel what resembles faint paper cut but the scratches are very light and only designed to pierce the very top layer of the skin in the hands of an experienced therapist they are made within just a few seconds is hijama safe and hygienic yes hijama is safe and they use single use supplies for each client surfaces are cleaned frequently using hospital grade disinfectants and all clinical waste objects are disposed of properly after hijama is completed the cup points are usually wiped with no sting antiseptic wipe then a small amount of olive oil is massaged in since the scratches are so light they close up by very quickly therefore there is no need to apply a wound dressing i have seen videos showing a lot of blood in the cups is that how much blood is removed no not at all hijama isn't about removing lots of blood from the body it's simply about breaking the skin's surface so that toxin can escape each individual person bleeds differently depending on the health of the area being cupped some may naturally bleed a lot whereas others hardly bleed at all both of these are completely normal how to prepare for hijama patient must shower an hour before hijama patient should not eat anything for 4 hours before the procedure don't eat meat the day of hijama no heavy activity the day of hijama patient and practitioner should have done their ablution wudu they both should recite quran during the procedure are there any side effects there aren't any side effects per se but some clients may feel sore and slightly worn out for around 24 hours after treatment all patients are encouraged to rest have something light to eat and not do anything strenuous for the rest of the day what is the best time to get hijama performed the 17th 19th or the 21st of the lunar month either a thursday monday or a tuesday having said this hijama can be performed on any day at any time particularly if you are unwell and need it as soon as possible how often should i get hijama performed healthy people can have it performed once or twice a year preferably in the hotter months for all other patients the frequency will depend on what they are being treated for their general health and how well their skin heals how many treatment do i need that will depend on your health condition age and how well your body respond to the treatment i was suffering from pain due to heel bone spur i tried everything for my heel pain including going to orthopedic surgeon and getting cortisol injection but it did not heal my pain what helped me the most is getting hijama as well as omitting sugar from my diet.